Yeah. <laughs> oh, hey, I didn't see you come in there. My name's Darwin. You might know me from other various media projects like Darwin on the Trail, the YouTube channel, or the Outdoor Evolution podcast. But did you know in 2019, I worked with the Arizona Trail Association to produce a documentary film about the history, geography, and community of the 800 mile Arizona Trail? Yep, it's true. And no, it's not just a collection of my YouTube videos that I took, rebranded, and called it a documentary. <laughs> Who would do that? The film was released on February 17th, 2020, and today marks its two-year anniversary. Over those two years, the film has been able to raise over $30,000 through multiple public showings, a digital release, and even a tasty beer that was named after the film. <sighs> Success. To celebrate its two-year anniversary, join me in rewatching the first five minutes of Through the Great Southwest. And if you still haven't seen the film because you thought it was a YouTube video, go check it out on Amazon or Vimeo because 100% of the proceeds go back to our public lands. Cheers. I first fell in love with the Grand Canyon State in 2016. I had just finished the Appalachian Trail and returned to the Southwest to start looking for trails to do in my new backyard. What I would discover was an 800 mile National Scenic Trail spanning the entire state of Arizona from Utah to Mexico. The Arizona Trail is still one of the best kept secrets both in Arizona, in the West, and in the world. The Arizona Trail is unique because the places that this trail goes through, it's so biodiverse. That's something that we hear from anybody who spent time on the trail is, I had no idea how tall and dry and lush and rich and incredible Arizona really is. And so the trail really kind of shows off all the different sides and it goes through kind of like the wild backbone of the state. There's everything from the low desert to the alpine forest, you know, all the way up on the San Francisco peaks. So there's a lot of different types of country to see, different animals. The Arizona Trail, like so many other long distance trails, started with one person. Dale Shewalter was his name. He's a Flagstaff area school teacher that was working as a surveyor in the mountains of Southern Arizona. And when he wasn't surveying, he was exploring on foot and on horseback. And because the early development of this trail happened in the 1980s, that's when mountain biking had developed in the U.S., first in California and then spread to other states in the West. So mountain biking was also something that interested him, and it became part of outdoor recreation in Arizona around that time. He knew a little bit about geology, and he loved Arizona. And he actually hiked through Arizona on what became basically the Arizona Trail before it was there. As he was on top of a mountain in southern Arizona looking north, knowing that there were trails in the Catalinas and trails in the Rincons and trails in other places, he thought, wow, what if there was this connecting trail between all these mountain ranges? And then eventually to the Mogollon Rim and eventually to Flagstaff and Grand Canyon and all the way to the Utah border. That's when he had this idea of the Arizona Trail. What if we could build a trail from Mexico to Utah, linking together existing pieces of trail, having it open for hikers, mountain bikers, and equestrians? Like, wouldn't this be amazing? He got some friends together and they all thought it was a good idea. And then he met with some land managers and he presented a plan to build an Arizona Trail. And his friends supported him and the Arizona Trail Association was formed and that made it official. People began to come out and it was pretty disorganized in the early days. And people just threw tools in the back of their car and we, you know, got the land manager to tell them where they can go and work on it. But it got better and more organized as time went on. The goal at that time was to complete the trail by the year 2000. In spite of the best efforts, we weren't able to finish it by the year 2000, but we did finish it by the year 2012 to correspond with Arizona's 100th anniversary. It's an idea that took off and people could believe in it and supported it.
It takes, I think, a true visionary to take something from dream to concept in a single lifetime, and that's what he did. He rallied support from the Forest Service, who he worked for seasonally. He rallied support from state parks and the Bureau of Land Management. Everybody he could get a meeting with, he said, here's my idea, and I'm starting to put together the route. And everybody jumped on board with it. So in a way, the timing was perfect, and it was just a really nice combination of energies that without his vision and support, it probably would have been just another really cool idea that would have gone nowhere. And the task is daunting, but that's something that never deterred him. He knew he would get done eventually. Sadly, he passed away right before the trail's completion. He died of cancer at a young age, unfortunately, before the trail was completed, about a year before it was completed. But he knew, he knew it was almost done. Even though he wasn't involved with the association much anymore, he saw where his dream had turned into a nonprofit organization that then hired staff and raised money to get the thing done. The Arizona Trail is so diverse, and I think the only way one can really imagine this